I'm pleased to announce Jeff Baxter and Nito from Brazil. Gentlemen. Well, thank you very much, Joel. My name is Jeff Baxter, and it's absolute honor and privilege to share the stage with Nito from Brazil. Thank you, Jeff. Hi, all. This is Nito from Brazil. How are you? Thank you so much. It's a big honor to be here. I work in our customer proof of concept labs, CPOC. And we have been doing POCs for customers almost every day. And it's a big privilege to show these demos to you guys. So let's go ahead and get to okay. it. OK, NetApp. I love this company. So the task we had from Joel that he laid out was pretty simple, right? Show you the tools that we have available today that are making the data fabric real. So we're going to walk you through a series of demos, NetApp private storage, cloud on tap, integrations we have with hyperscalers, our AltaVault products, just a whole bunch of different things. So I think the right thing to do, Nito, let's go ahead and bring up our on-command cloud manager. Okay. It's a free tool we released in the last year that really gives you visibility into what you're doing on the cloud. Okay, here we have on-command cloud manager. As you can see on screen, we have on our left, near the cloud, NetApp private storage, mm -hmm. as we have a FAS attached to it. On our right, we have on-premise environment, CPOC, that we have a FAS attached to it. And we have a replication in place between both clouds. So you're showing here on-prem storage, as well as storage sitting near the cloud, near AWS. Now I know a lot of customers talk to me about, you know, maybe I don't want to bring out a second data center, right? We're, I'm not in the business, business of building data centers any longer. So instead of building out a second data center, maybe I want to put my data out near the cloud. So I know Joel was mentioning to me earlier, he has a database that he'd really like to see us back up during this demo. So can you go ahead and show us that database? Yes, we have a database, Joel's database, that is sitting on-premises, CPOC, and we have three letters, E, F, and G. So Joe's database sitting on CPOC on-premises and letters E, F, and G. Okay. So now the tool we're going to use to back this up is actually a relatively new tool that we just released in the last year, something called Snap Center. And Snap Center takes all of the skills in the audience, those of us who have been working with NetApp for a long time, of the last couple of decades, things like SnapDrive and Snap Manager, and starts to put them all together into a single pane of glass starting with SQL Server. Okay, let me show this. So here we have Snap Center. I'm going to sign in. We have, I'm going to settings. We have two storage recall machines, one on-premises, CPOC, and another one near the cloud, NetApp private storage. Okay. Okay? We have two compute layers, one in AWS, and another one in CPOC on-premises. Okay. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use on-premise compute layer, CPOC, and I'm going to do a backup. I'm going to select my data set, Joe's backup data set, and I'm going to click and do a backup right now. Done. So just a couple clicks and you're backing up that on-prem database in an application and database consistent manner. Yes, and we are doing a little bit more on this, right? So we are backing up that database on-premises, but we are also replicating that data near the cloud to NetApp private storage. So as we can see on the job details, we have on-premise SQL. Yep. We are doing a local backup. Right. We are replicating that backup near to the cloud, to NetApp private storage. Now I know for this piece of the demo, we sped it up a little bit because it takes a little bit of time to set up those SnapMare relationships and accelerate those out from on-prem to the cloud. But you're telling me in just one click, we backed up Joel's database, did it in an application consistent manner, and called SnapMirror technology, something we've all known for decades, and pushed it out right next to the cloud with NetApp private storage. Perfect. Very good. So let me ask you a question. Uh, one thing that frustrates, I think, all of us is DR just for the sake of DR, right? Data sitting there doing absolutely nothing. So something I get asked all the time is, OK, can I use that data I've replicated out near the cloud? And can I use it for test dev, right? Can I actually use it to provide environments for my application developers? Is that something you can yes. show us? So let me show you here. So here we have System Manager. I'm mm. pointing System Manager to NetApp Private Storage. Same exact tool. Exactly the same. NetApp Data Manager is the same. We have here one aggregate, NPS 102, aggregate one, that we have 18 volumes. And we are using 1.5 terabytes. So 18 volumes. 1.5 terabytes of space. Yes, and what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to create a dev and test, and let's see, using Snap Center. 
Snap Center, same tool we used on-prem, now we're using for NPS. Yep. So clicking on clone backup, here the only difference, remember that on the first demo, we made a local backup on-premises, and we replicate that data to near the cloud. Okay. So I'm going to use a clone from secondary, I'm going to use the clone near the cloud on the top private storage, and I'm going to use the compute layer in AWS. Okay, so you're using that replicated backup that we just did in the last step, but instead of putting a bunch of compute out near the cloud, you're actually using AWS as the compute layer. Yep. Wow. Okay, four more up, yeah. More steps, I'm doing the auto sign here for the C letter. I'm going to select the backup that I want to use, and I'm going to select the archive location. Okay. Okay, typical scenario for Stuff that people are familiar with over the last couple of years. Yes. Just, yeah, absolutely. Couple of clicks. Doing the next here. Selecting the resource, Joe's database, that I'm running from secondary. Right. I'm going to apply all the backup, the, the logs, the archive logs, the transaction logs, actually, that's SQL, that's not Oracle. And? And done. Done. So it's as you can wizard. see, we have a clone, one clone from that database using the compute layer in AWS mm -hmm. and the data near the cloud in AWS. Wow. But we can do more. Like, I can do four clones, or okay. I can do 100 clones. doesn't matter. So four clones, 100 clones, all through that same exact process, you could automate it and build out one, four, or 100 different application developer environments. We know that NetApp Data Manage is the same. doesn't matter. So now you've put the data in the right place to get the job done, right? You've become best friends with your application developers. Uh, you know, Nito, can any of our competitors do this? No. None of them? No. None of them? Like, can HP do this? No. Can EMC do Ever. this? Never. Never. Thank you. So, but this must have taken up, what, like six terabytes of space, something like that for those four clones? No, we are using Flex clone. NetApp data management is the same. Remember, on-premises, near the cloud, or in the cloud, we are using the same data management. So this is System Manager. Yeah, take a look here back on System Manager. We have 26 volumes because we create clones. Mm -hmm. We have more volumes, of course. And we are still using 1.5 terabytes of data. So you've got eight additional volumes for the log, one each logs and data for four, logs, right? right? Okay. But yeah, yeah, I can do math. Okay. But it's just <laughs> 1.5 terabytes. And if it's 100 clones, it's still 1.5 terabytes. Love you. Perfect. I'm learning something every day. Okay. So, you know, we've made our application developers happy, right? We've built out this whole entire environment. But, uh, you know, what happens now that we've just made best friends with them if we have an outage as a result, right? We work with some incredibly resilient partners, some incredibly resilient clouds, um, hyperscalers like AWS and Azure and Software, you know, but even then they have outages. I mean, we all have outages. Is there anyone out there who has never in their professional life had an outage? Anyone? Anyone? No hands? No hands? I had one person in Vegas that claimed it, so I took him to the blackjack table, and it still didn't work out. It was weird. But so we still have these outages. How could we deal with that? Do we have something we could offer in that case? Of course. Metap private storage. It's a multi-cloud environment. It's a multi-cloud environment. Okay, what do you mean by that? Okay, let me show you this. So here we have Azure Console running on Azure, and we have a SQL instance running on it. CSG SQL 01. Remember that name. CSG SQL 01. Repeat okay, I got after it. me. CSG SQL 01. Perfect. You sound like me with my toddler, right? Okay. C I can do it. CSG SQL 01. Got Perfect. It. That's running on Azure. Okay. Showing where is the database actually looking at SQL Server is CSG SQL 02. Question for you. Where yes. is that? Well, okay. So CSG SQL 01 is on Azure, but it's actually the active node is running on CSG SQL 02. Where is that? I don't know. Where is it running? Uh, he knows, right? Well, I know just because you showed me this demo okay. 15 times. So but where, is, where is it running? Okay. It's running on AWS, okay. In Amazon. Okay. So but what I'm going to do right now is the database is running on Amazon, right? Yeah. And I'm going to stop the instance well, right wait, now. You're, you're just shutting it down. Yes. Take a look on the screen and done. Let's go back to SQL Server. So what's going on here? So it's offline. One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Three, one thousand. Done. Four, done. One. Done. So that was five seconds. Yeah. Five seconds, and you failed an entire running SQL database from AWS over to Azure. Yes. And that was what, a couple terabytes? Yeah. What if it was 100 terabytes? Doesn't matter. No, like, if it was Doesn't like, matter. So how long would it take? Doesn't matter. Remember, one very important point, right? So why that's so fast? You guys have an idea? Because the data never moves. The data is in 
in the top private storage near the clouds. Wow. So now what if I wanted to take that data, and we talked a lot about near the cloud. What if I wanted to show some stuff in the cloud? So we have something called Cloud on Tap, right, which is running on tap, the same on tap we know and love, directly inside Amazon Web Services. Can you show me what that would look like? So you want to show on tap, on data on tap, cloud on tap, on, ta on tap. Yeah, bring, bring up that on command okay. cloud manager. How does so that let's look? Let's take like? a look. Okay. So the same tool, on command cloud manager. As you can see, we have three clouds. Uh -huh. On your left, we have AWS, Amazon, that right. we have a cloud on top attached to it. You can see by the icon here. Okay. So on your right, we have CPOC, CPOC, and that's on-premises, and we have FS attached to it as well. On the bottom, we have near the cloud, the top private storage, and we also have, have, we have a FAS attached to it. Question for you. Yes. And for you, what's the warning sign? Well, usually you. When, when we do demos, you're supposed to take the warning sign off. You know that, right? Okay, sorry. Yeah, no. So the warning sign in this one, actually, it's kind of interesting. I ask that we leave it in, because what this actually is telling us, it's a pretty cool feature of on-command cloud manager, is that we've actually provisioned storage out in Amazon that we haven't yet provisioned through cloud on tap out to customers. So it's actually giving us a warning that we're paying for storage that we're not yet utilizing. I actually think that's a really cool, almost you know, hidden feature yeah. inside cloud manager. That's good. So let me ask you a question. We're showing on a single screen now data on-prem, near the cloud, and in the cloud. Yes. So if I wanted to take a database, say, from cloud on tap and repatriate it back on site uh, to my on-prem storage, how, what tool would we use to do that? Okay, you are asking me to repatriate, right? Yeah. So, but hold on. Uh, data on top, cloud on top, it's on top. It's the yeah. same. Do you want me to show Snap Center again? So it'd be the same exact tool, Snap Center. Yes. So do you guys want another five-minute demo of the same yes exact thing no? over and over again? No. Uh, good. If you said yes, we'd be really off script. So, no, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to save something for day three. When you come back tomorrow for Dave Hits, no, it's too late. We already got the nose. <laughs> Sorry, you're like too late. There. The latency is not good. Yeah, not, okay. late, not good latency there. Sorry. So, but if you come back on day three for Dave Hits and Joe Caradonna, I think they're going to show you a really interesting view of how we can go ahead and restore that data from the cloud. But let's keep moving. You know, Nito, the cloud is not just about hyperscalers, right? Cloud, we have people sitting in our audience, right? Cloud service providers, systems integrators, value-added resellers, who maybe are in the cloud business themselves or looking to be, right? They want to build out cloud services that they can then offer to many of our customers here in attendance. So we have a tool that we built for that where people can create their own cloud with something called NetApp Storage Grid. You know, NetApp Storage Grid is our object storage offering. It can, be, it can sit there and it can maintain general purpose object storage for billions and billions of objects, just massive amounts of data. Or in this particular example, we're actually going to use it as an on-prem or service provider offered backup repository. So we've got Storage Grid, and Nito's showing it here up on the screen. How do we make it easy then for our customers and our partners to back up to that cloud? Well, that's where we introduced AltaVault, which is our cloud-enabled backup appliance. So can you show me AltaVault, Nito? Yes. So here we have on-premise out of all that we have the console, and here you can see the provider is NetApp Storage Grid Web Scale. Okay. So keep that in mind, guys. Please do not forget that bucket name for day three, Joe's Awesome Backup. Joe's Awesome Backup, got it. Keep that in mind. So what I'm going to show right now is I'm going to show the seat share mm -hmm. that we have in out of all that I'm going to use that shift seat share from my backup tool to store my backup. OK, so that's simple. It's a SIF share that your backup tool can just point, point its backups at. Simple that. So let's take a look on, we are talking about SQL Server, right? So go back to SQL Server. OK. Right click, Tasks, Backup. I'm going to remove the local destination from my backup, and I'm going to replace it with the seat share from out of vault. So you're using the native backup utility that comes with SQL Server. Yeah. But this could just as easily be backup packages from any of our partners, a net backup or Commvault, the, Sipana, the anything same. like that. Pretty much the same. All of that works the same way. Yeah. So here I'm going to do the backup. And after to do the backup, I'm going to, to start the backup. I'm going to go back to AutoVault and okay. show nice reports. So going back to AutoVault, here. As you can see, I'm going to show two nice reports, front end throughput. Mm -hmm. I'm going to change the window here to five minutes that you can see the throughput coming through the out of appliance. This is the data already streaming into the out of appliance yes, when SQL backup. backup. Yes, exactly. Okay. And we're already getting you know, five gigs of total yes. data in there? Very and good. And here, I'm going back to the same reports, and I'm going to show the report about storage optimization. OK, storage optimization. So we're going to the duplication factor. So we can see a lot of, of nice 
the duplication is happening in the box right now, change to the five minutes because you just are doing the backup right now, you can see that the duplication factor just for one backup is three to one. So just with that first backup, just starting that, and then we're already at three to one, and as we continue to add backups, continue to do backups, we're only gonna see that ratio grow and grow and grow exactly. of the overall storage efficiency yep. in the optimal. Yep, 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 yep. So this is, this is pretty cool, but uh, you know, now I've got a question. What if I change my mind about which cloud I wanna go to? I mean, that backup just finished, right? And all of a sudden I get a notice, and, and this has happened, unfortunately, that in, in two weeks, the cloud that I've chosen is going out of business, right? Now I've lost all my backups, and I've lost an, the ability to do backups in the future, can AltaVault do anything for me there, Nito? Yes, of course. You can use AltaVault Cloud Agility. AltaVault Cloud Agility. Okay, tell me a little bit about what that is. You can move from your local provider to a different provider. So right now on this demo, we have a top storage grid. Uh -huh. And we can move to Amazon S3. So move from the storage grid that we just backed up to, move all the existing backups and the future backups straight over to Amazon S3. Yes. Can you show me that? In demo? Yes, but I'm going to show a very nice feature that you can have in demos, and that's an old school. Old school. We have to do this once in every demo. It's actually yes. a quota. So let's do it. CLI. CLI, yes. Okay, just one. Round of applause for CLI. Anyone? No? Oh, wow. There we go. Okay, let's oh, do it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. There we go. So with three commands, yep. you can move from your local provider in a type storage grid to Amazon S3. Okay, so just three commands. We told and it's it. moving. All yeah, right. and we sped it up, obviously, because it takes a certain amount of time. This yep. is moving all of your data from one cloud to the other but we actually tell it what provider you want to migrate to, yes. right? how to authenticate to it, and go ahead, set format, and gone, and it's going. Yeah, and I can show to you what happens in the screen here right now. So we just finished, no more CLI. Going back to the GUI, yeah. you can see the provider Amazon S3. Going back to the details of the cloud information, you can see the same bucket name, the same repository name, Joel's Awesome Backup. So just with a couple commands, you moved Joel's Awesome Backup from a storage grid instance over to an Amazon S3 instance, all my past backups and all the future backups going forward with no change to my backup app. Perfect. Wow. So if I kind of summarize what we've done here, we've replicated data from on-prem out to near the cloud with NetApp private storage, right? We've shown how you can use that data to build a test dev environment and have your application developers absolutely love you. We've shown how you can then fail over from one cloud to the other, literally five seconds moving between dissimilar hyperscalers and keep your business running. And now with AltaVault, we've shown how you can back up to on-prem or cloud service providers running storage grid and even move that if necessary between clouds. I mean, you know, who else can do this? No one but NetApp. Can HP do it? No. Can like Dell? Ever. No. Finish. Can Dell do it? No. Okay. So no one but NetApp. No one. On-premises near the cloud or in the cloud, NetApp data management and is the same. And we and I love it. <laughs> you too. I too. So just to make it really clear, you know who else is gonna love it? Your IT architects are gonna love it because there's absolutely no lock-in in the solution. Your security teams are gonna love it because you maintain control of your data. The governance and security remains intact. And your CEO and your executive staff are gonna love it because using skills that the people in this room already have and have built over decades, you can immediately use those skills in the hybrid cloud to deliver value to your business today. That's pretty cool. Now let me ask you, Nito. Okay. You're Mr. Database. No. You've moved your database from cloud and back and all this other thing. But one thing we haven't really talked about is what if this database has really intense performance requirements? So you're Mr. Davis, but I know you're also Mr. Performance, and I'd be remiss if I let you get off the stage without giving us a little bit of a flash demo. Do you guys want to see a flash demo or no? You want to see a flash demo? You haven't lived here. Yes you or no? A flash demo. Come on. Yes. I think that's a yes. Show them a flash demo. Thanks so much. Okay. So you guys know that I work and love CPOC. And we have been doing a great POCs for customers. And one in particular, customer came to CPOC, he would like to see an Oracle application running on hybrid solution, okay. hybrid fast. And during the POC, he's going to increase the randomness of the application, and he would like to add all flash fast nodes to see what's the downtime for their application. Okay. And I want to show to you guys about that. Let's okay? see it. So we have a custom dashboard that on the top we have application layer. The application layer, we are collecting real-time Oracle statistics, okay? okay? 
On the bottom, we have an ETAP layer that we are collecting also real-time statistics from ETAP. And this is running on a hybrid array right now? That's running on the hybrid array right now. So the, the latency is okay, four milliseconds, everything is green. Okay. So during the POC, customer was going to increase the randomness in the working set, and that's going to start to become red. So what we can do, we have a nice feature in Clusterdate on top, as you can see on the screen using System Manager, mm -hmm. that we can move live a volume or a LAN to a different media. Okay. And we are going to move to an all flash fast solution. So three clicks and you're already moving a volume non-disruptively straight over to an all flash fast. Four clicks. Four clicks, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, okay. So as you can see on the screen right now, from 16,000 IOPS, four milliseconds going to 10, we are doing close to 50,000 IOPS, 0.9 milliseconds, and pay attention on this. We are increasing the number of snapshots. We are close to 500. So you got 500 snapshots to 50,000 IOPS. That's pretty good. How much time does that take? How much disruption? No, not a time. Like how much downtime? Zero! Well, that 50,000 is pretty good. Could, but take uh, a look whoa, more. Whoa. We are, during the POC, we are adding more workloads. Okay. So right now, after to add more workloads, we have close to 240,000 IOPS, 0.9 milliseconds, and we are close to 1,000 snapshots. Wow. So you've done 1,000 snapshots. You've so gone far. from just 1,000 snapshots so far. You've gone from 10,000 IOPS to 50,000 IOPS to over 200,000 IOPS, less than one millisecond of latency. And how much downtime? Zero! So who else can do this? Can Pure do this? Ever. No can, scale out. Can, can Dell Extreme IO do this? No. No? So Only us. Only us. So you moved from disk to flash. You kept all your app integration running. And you demonstrated 200,000 sub-millisecond IOPS with absolutely zero downtime. Yes, with 2015 to celebrate you guys at Insight. So only that NetApp. Counts. Wow. So let me summarize what we've shown here. Just in the few minutes that we've taken here, we've taken that database, that Joel's database he asked us to take good care of. We've taken application database consistent. We've replicated it out to NetApp private storage. We've used NetApp private storage then to create a test dev environment for application developers. We've then used AltaVault to send those backups out to a cloud and even failed over between different clouds using things like Cloud Agility and NPS multi-cloud. And then we show that same exact database being driven to over 200,000 IOPS with absolutely no disruption. So you know what, Nito? What? That's why I love this company. We love this. Thank you, yeah, Matt. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Very good, Jonathan. Nito. Nito, come on. Oh. What's up? 240,000? That wasn't even as fast as Germany scored four goals against Brazil in the World Cup Finals. Uh. Oh. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You could do it's better. Okay, come on. So wait, so, so what do you say, 240,000 isn't enough? Well, I mean, you know, that, that, that might have been kind of harsh, Joel, but, but you know, I, I know these guys built something that can do a lot more than that, and I know Nito could get more out of it. So can we see more? Okay, do you guys want to see more? Can we do yeah. <laughs> Can we do more? I think we can do more. Mm -hmm. It's an SVP and an EVP, I think. Are we in trouble? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's okay, do, more. do more. Yeah, more. But I need your help, yeah, okay? So let's take a look. We finish at... 240,000 IOPS, 2015 is them shots. Let's take a look on this screen. Come on, come on, pick it up. Pick it up, a little more? Okay. <laughs> so 240,000 IOPS, 2015 to celebrate inside 2015. We have four nodes, two hybrid nodes and two all flash fast nodes. We are going to remove two hybrid nodes and add two all flash fast nodes. Let's take a look. So remove. Two hybrid, adding two more. Pay attention on the bubbles and the letters, please. Okay, 400,000 IOPS. Wow, is that good enough? No. Is that okay or no? no? More? No, they want more. More. They want more? <laughs> more? I cannot, I can hear. More? Okay, want more? <laughs> Thank you. More. Can you do more? Two more nodes, okay? okay. Six nodes. Pay attention to the bubbles and the letters, please. Okay, moving. Oops! Almost 600,000 IOPS. That okay or no? 600,000? Is that good? Can we do? No? More. They don't Need look more. more. Come on. More? More. More? more? Okay. okay, two more nodes. I think that's enough. Two more nodes. Two more nodes. That's, yeah, that's yeah, okay, that's, yeah. That's okay, and 900,000 IOPS. Wow, nice job, nice job. 5,000 snapshots. Thanks, thanks, everyone. Are we good? Is that okay? Is that the top? Is that it, or, or can we get a little bit more? I, I, I think uh, that we can do a little bit more. Uh, do you want a little bit more? A little bit more? More? 
They want more. Come on. Go ahead. Okay. Do it. More workloads. And I need your help and your help. Okay. Okay. Be crazy, be loud. <laughs> we are going to count to three. I'm going to be crazy here. Okay? <laughs> okay. One, One, two, two three. three. Eha! <laughs> Close to 7,000 snapshots. Is that okay? Is that good now? That was we very good. Are we okay? Yeah, 1.2 million good. eyes? That was very good. Very good. Very cool. So, uh, you know, I think what we've demonstrated to you, Roger, and to you, Joel, and to this audience is that not only, not only can NetApp deliver on, you know, pure flash, right? We've got pure flash. Not only can we deliver extreme performance, actually we can do better than any of the other guys out there, but we do it without compromising data management. We do it with enterprise proven reliability and we're data fabric ready in the package. Now that's a complete solution we bring to market. So that's a fantastic job. Everybody saw the performance that we could get out of this. We are so confident that we're announcing a three times performance guarantee for customers. So we're, we're offering a Three-time performance guarantee. This gives uh, customers a great opportunity to move to AFF, all flash fast. This allows partners to help their customers gain the performance that they need. The guarantee, we guarantee for Microsoft SQL Server and Oracle databases that we'll achieve three times more IOPS at one millisecond latency, or we'll provide professional optimization to make that work but we're pretty confident we're gonna, not gonna need the professional services. Um, also want to say that the guarantee also includes AFF free controller upgrade, seven years of support, and smart bundles. So if you're a customer out there, hope you're listening in, reach out to your sales counterparts when you get back. If you're partners, take this to your customers. This is a great deal, it's great technology, and it's really gonna help your business. So I wanna thank Joel, Nito and Jeff, Thank for your you. time up here. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. Jeff, super. Thanks so much. I don't know what to say to you, Nito. Thanks so much. <laughs>